this course is all about how to extend the back end of your WordPress site using advanced custom fields and how to use Beaver Themers field connections to incorporate that information into your front end page designs. The demo that we're looking at right now is a page that provides free printable resources for musicians. And we are going to rebuild this from scratch, but before we dive into doing that, I just want you to have a firm understanding of the broad strokes of how this is all put together. One of the major features in advanced custom fields is the ability to create custom post types. So in this demo, we created a custom post type called printables. Here's the list view of all of our printables. And I'll just click on here so you can see what a, one of our printables posts looks like. Now I'm also gonna just give you a quick peek at what the printables custom post type settings page looks like. Another one of the main features included in advanced custom fields is field groups. Field groups are associated with post types. And this field group that we're looking at here is associated with our printables custom post type. And you see that the fields that I have created are a thumbnail image, download content, and short description. So if I go back over to one of our printable posts, those things are populated on the editor. So we have a space to upload a thumbnail image, we have a space to upload our PDF file, and we have a space to show the short description of that post. Another advanced custom fields feature that we're going to be working with is taxonomies. And we know taxonomies from the native WordPress editor as categories and tags, but with advanced custom fields, we can extend this a little bit and customize it to our particular needs. In this case, we're just gonna keep it simple and follow the categories and tags convention. So let's move over to the front end of our site and see how advanced custom fields ties into Beaver Builder and field connections. So here we have an archive page built with the loop module and three field connections. Now, when you have Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer installed on a site, and you see a little plus sign here next to one of the fields, that means that you can hook up a field connection to plug in dynamic data onto that field. So in this case, all of that dynamic data is coming from those advanced custom fields settings that we set up on the back end of our site. So that's an overview of how this is all put together. We're gonna to start with a fresh WordPress install and build this out together. The first thing that we're gonna do is set up a custom post type. And for this demo, we're not gonna do anything fancy. We don't need to open the advanced settings. We just need to choose a plural and singular name for our post type. Now we can add a field group to our post type. We want three fields in our field group, a thumbnail image. The second one's going to be a file. This is the PDF file that people can download. The third is going to be a short description of the file, and that's going to display underneath the thumbnail image. Okay, we have to select a name for our field group. And we just need to assign our field group to our printables post type. Now we're going to move on to configure our taxonomies. I'm going to keep things simple and we'll just use the standard convention of categories and tags. Now I'm just going to enter the categories and tags here for our taxonomies. Now we're ready to add our printable posts. 
And I've started with an Airtable base that will keep me organized with my content. So I'm going to start by uploading the PNG and PDF images into my media browser. And now this is just pretty much a data entry job. Add my thumbnail image. And you'll notice here that this is syncing up with all of the fields that we set up in the advanced custom fields field group dialog. And I can just copy and paste my short descriptions from my Airtable base over here. So that's the data entry process. Upload the thumbnail image, the PDF file, and the short description. Now before moving on to actually building our page, there is one important setting that we cannot ignore. So click over here on Beaver Builder in the settings menu. Now we want to select post types and enable our new custom post type printables. So we've set up our custom post type, we've set up our field group, we've set up our taxonomies, we've done all our data entry, and we have enabled printables on our Beaver Builder settings page. We're all ready to start working on the front end design of our page. So when we're done, this is what our page is going to look like. In this video, we are going to build out the archive page content grid down here using the loop module. And then I'll do a separate video that shows how to add these filtering buttons up here using Grid Builder WP. Before we get started building out this page, I'm just going to give you a real quick look at the outline panel. Our containing module is a loop module. And inside of the loop module, we're using box modules, an image module, and a heading module to create this loop layout. So what I mean by loop layout, this is an archive style layout where we create the design, insert field connections, and the design will repeat with all that dynamic content. So in this instance, the dynamic content is being pulled from a custom post type that I created using advanced custom fields to house my free printable resources for my music blog. But this would work just the same if we're pulling dynamic content in from blog posts. So let's go ahead and recreate this from scratch. And that's going to start with a blank page. And next I'm going to stack up all of the modules that we need. So the outermost container is going to be a loop module. We'll choose the blank preset for the loop module. Inside that, we're going to put three box modules. We need to make sure that the direction of the parent container is set to column. One of them is a parent container with two children inside. The top child container has a photo module and the bottom child container has a heading module. So now that we have all of our modules in place, I'm going to just circle back and start stylizing them. And this is a very non-linear process, so that's why I've provided a PDF guide that lists all the styling and steps that you can refer to as well. I'll also put the template file on Assistant Pro so that you can grab that if you just want to use this template without having to stylize it. So here I am on the uppermost child container adding that periwinkle color. Now the bottom one is going to have a black background color. Let's open up the parent container and get rid of that gap there because we don't want that. Now, as long as I'm in the parent container, I'm going to add the border radius. And the box shadow. Now for the children containers, we want that radius to match around the outside. Now let's add in that field connection up here in the topmost child container so that we can see our little thumbnail image. Mm -hmm. 
and we can get these images to center right up with the alignment settings in that box module container. And we'll also just add a little bit of padding. All right, we're looking pretty good in our topmost child container. Now let's work on the bottom one, the black with the back black background. So just like that periwinkle one, the black one, we need to adjust the border radius to match the parent container. And we're going to pull in the dynamic data for our descriptions here. The first setting is ACF post field. And the second field connection setting is right down here, short description. Now we just need to stylize it a little bit. It's not showing up because it's black on black, so. There it goes, and maybe just stylize the font a little bit. And we'll go back into this box module to set the line settings to center. And I know that when I created this before, I ended up going down in here to the width and height settings and set a height for my black box container so that if any of the descriptions fall into two lines, my black boxes stayed the consistent height. Next, I just want to address some of the spacing issues here. Space evenly on the parent box container is going to fix this issue that's happening with the landscape versus portrait orientation on the images so that all the black boxes fall down to the bottom. And then I need that periwinkle color to cover the full container. So on that child container there, we're gonna set flex grow to one. So we're almost done. There's a few more things that need to be tweaked, but let's just take a step back and publish the page and see how it looks. And we'll do a little comparison to our reference demo content. Now let's open up Beaver Builder and make those final adjustments to our page. Okay, let's finish wrapping this up by sticking our loop module into a fixed width column. Then we'll scale down the size of our font here in our heading module. Um, we're also going to align our font left and add a little bit of padding into the flex row that the heading module sits inside of. Next, we're going to address the pagination because the original demo piece didn't have any pagination. I turned pagination off and then I just set it to 100 so that all of my results are just going to show up on the first page since I don't have a whole lot of listings on this page. Okay, we are almost there. The last item that we have to address is to link up the download file. So I have this set up in advanced custom fields so that there is a PDF file tied to each custom post type. Now we've plugged in the field connection and when we click on an item, we get the PDF loaded. So that wraps up this demo of how to build this piece of content using the box module and the loop module. Stay tuned to learn how to add these content filtering buttons using Grid Builder WP. Now we're going to set up our grid filter using Grid Builder WP. So here we are at wpgridbuilder.com, and this is my account page. Of course, I have all my personal information whited out, but this is where you find your zip file that you can download and install on the WordPress dashboard plugin dialog. We're also going to want to grab Grid Builder WP's Beaver Builder integration add on. 
So back on our site, this is what our plugin stack looks like. And the two components that we're going to be working with in Grid Builder WP are facets and styles. And you can see down here that we've activated our Beaver Builder add-on. So I've set up two facets, but the only one that I'm using right now on this printables page is the one that's called printables tags. And these settings are all pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. So let's move on to the style settings. All right, so all I have set up here is under the button pressed menu. I just have these three colors set, and that's all I've done for the style settings. Now we can jump into the Beaver Builder page builder on our printables page. I'm just gonna get rid of this Grid Builder WP module and stick in a new one. And this is super easy to set up. There is only three settings that we need to choose here. Um, I'm really happy with the way that Grid Builder WP works with the loop module in Beaver Builder. And we're all done setting up our loop module grid filter buttons. <music>